Good morning, friends. Today's message comes from Mark 1, 14 through 20. And my thoughts are immediately. Let's think about it. Water froze throughout today's worship from the story of Jonah to the Sea of Galilee. And through the baptismal waters, we celebrate water connects us to the immediate and to the eternal. You know, a teacher once told me that the water that covers the entire world right now is the very same water that was present at creation. It's the cycle of evaporation, condensation that were set in motion when God created it, filtered the same molecules of water that flooded the earth and flow out of the kitchen taps and today, and it's all the same water. Water means life. We're born out of water. We cannot live without water. So, you know, it's not really hard to understand how waters of baptism represent our spiritual birth or why it's important to Jesus that he be baptized by John in the Jordan because it's all the same water. And the story of Jonah is not today's reading. is repentance that we remember first. It's not the part about the giant fish swallowing Jonah and spitting him up on the shore after swimming around the water for three days. What we remember is the water. Jonah's story pivots us on a three-day voyage in that organic submarine. It's in the belly of the fish that Jonah cries out to God and repents for his reluctance to go on. And through his repentance, Jonah gets a second chance. And when he takes it, Nineveh gets a second chance also. Through his repentance, God changes his mind. Maybe you consider God repents also, I don't know, because the people of Nineveh respond to Jonah short, but to the message of the sermon that he gave 40 days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And those are not really inspiring words, if you ask me. But the Ninevites got inspired, and they believe in God, and the scripture tells us, and they repent of their wickedness and seek God's forgiveness. And repentance is key to the remaining obedience of God. It's more than simply saying we're sorry for what we've done. Repentance is about changing and going in a different direction. And when we return to God, we turn away from everything else. It's a full 180 moment. It's a radical shift in our perspective. We leave our old ways of being and thinking, and we leave behind, and we turn our face toward something completely new. For it's in today's gospel message, we read about four men who experienced this radical shift in perspective. And they had no idea that they were getting themselves into. They left everything behind and they turned their faces towards something completely new, yet they did not hesitate. Now, after John was arrested and Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near, repent and believe in the good news. And as Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and they followed him. And as he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. And immediately he called them and he left their boats and they left their father and all the hired men that were with them. And they followed him. And this tells us from Mark 1, 14 through 20. While looking at pictures of the Holy Land, I decided that Jesus must have been a mountain climber because there's really no flat land in Israel, as far as I can see. And traveling from town to another town required climbing and ascending hills. And while none of them are very high by Rocky Mountain standards or the Smokies, most of them are very steep. And as Jesus came from Galilee with his time in the wilderness, he moved from the desolate barren mountains into the fertile hills surrounding Lake Gesenaret or Lake Kinnereth, or it's what we call the Sea of Galilee. And the Sea of Galilee lies some 600 feet below sea level. And weather is always most temperate there. Yet strong winds come down through the Valley of Doves without notice, and they can stir this lake up, and it can get rough. And we know that Jesus moved from his hometown of Nazareth to the fishing village of Capernaum to begin his ministry, and there in the rocky shore of the Sea of Galilee, he calls out to James and John and to Simon and Andrew. And unlike Jonah's sermon, repent or be destroyed, Jesus preaches repentance from a different angle. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. 
Repent and believe in the good news. This is not turning away from punishment, but, but a turning towards God's promise made real. Instead of destruction, Jesus preaches good news. The kingdom of God is near, and as he preaches this new view of repentance, he calls a sets of brothers to follow him. And we know very little about the background of these disciples whom Jesus called. The four in today's story were fishermen. Matthew was a tax collector. And what had the other seven done before Jesus came into their lives? We don't know. As far as we can tell, these 12 persons Jesus called to be his companions were just simply ordinary men. As far as we can tell, Jesus didn't do background checks to determine IQ levels. Uh, they didn't want to know their financial acumen or professional skills or their temple education. He picked people just like me and you. And they were far from perfect, but they were called. And when God called Jonah, he gave him a specific message to deliver. But the four fishermen who left their nets and their boats, they were not given any instruction at all, friends. They had no idea what they were getting into. Yet they responded immediately, without asking questions, without hesitation. And Jesus called and they followed him immediately. There's a Greek word called euthus. And Mark likes to use it a lot. It gets translated as immediately or at once or suddenly, but also refers to physical space. Not just immediately, but like now. But as in the immediate vicinity right here, as euthus means straight as opposed to crooked. Directly like an arrow. These fishermen made a beeline to Christ and they did it and they didn't waste any time. For when Jesus said the kingdom of God has come near, these guys were on it. And they may not have been any kind of idea exactly what they were getting added to or how they were being asked to eventually cost them. But none of them mattered to them at this moment. Because Jesus called and they immediately answered. My friends, God is not in the business of better. He's in the business of new. And those fishermen, those turned disciples, were not interested in getting better at catching fish. They followed Jesus because he called them to suddenly something completely new, to be straight and now. And that's what Jesus is talking about. He said the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. You cannot repent just a little bit and believe in the just okay. Because if you want to experience the kingdom of God, God is not in the business of making your life just okay. God is not in the business of making your life slightly better from what you were. God wants to make all things new, including you, including me. But here's the key. Repent and believe in the gospel. Friends, it's not just a one-time event, but it's an ongoing commitment to keep on repenting and keep on believing. Even when we have questions, even when our tragedy lands straight in our lap, even when the world around us is disintegrating into hatred and violence, and even when we're weary and tired and worn out, and even when it feels like God is far away, we keep on repenting, we keep on believing, and that's just how we follow Christ. Just as these disciples followed Jesus when he called them away on their boats, a 100%, 180 degree turn, they immediately, they repented of their old ways and they took on the risk of being changed into something new. And they went all in. They went immediately. For it is in the sacrament of water and spirit that we celebrate what the Apostle Paul wrote about the church of Corinth. And he said, So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation, and everything old is passed away. You see, everything has become new. Our baptismal covenant is a promise to live into the life that Christ has called us. It's extended to each of us, and it's a call just to be better. It's more than to be better. It's a call to become new. Epiphanies demand an immediate and unquestioning response, friends. Not an answer, but an action. Not saying, but a doing. Christ's call is clear and simple. Follow me. He says, follow me and be changed forever. Not just a better person, but new. Now, friends, answering that call can be risky. It might mean giving up everything you've ever known, held dear. We've tried that. That's not us. All these things have to be pushed to the wayside. We do not know exactly what we're called sometimes. You know, so did those disciples. They didn't know what they were being called to either. 
but they dropped their nets and they hurried up. But we do know this. The one who calls us will be faithful to lead us. If we will faithfully follow, we will be changed. We can be made new, not just better. But friends, that is the good news. And friends, I bring you this message in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.